Ah, uh, the zombie movie subgenre, where for every diamond there is a mountain of shit. Due to the low production costs, the popularity, and the relative ease overall of making these movies, the last four decades or so have just flooded moviegoers with a shitload of zombie films. Whether it's slow zombies, whether they're fast zombies, they're talking zombies, Nazi zombies, gun-toting redneck zombies, lame-ass relationship-having zombies, and don't even get me started on the varying types of infected zombies. Personally, as an old-school horror fanatic, I prefer my zombies the way George Romero designed them back in the 60s, and that is slow, flesh-eating, undead corpses who are left roaming the planet because... 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 There's no more room in hell. You're goddamn right. And while Romero's early career gave us the icon of horror that is what we know today as the modern zombie, it was in 1985 that he made my personal favorite zombie movie of all time, Day of the Dead. your barricade no one gets through you got that i think i'm gonna like it here well you're not gonna like it in this review asshole because i'm not talking about that shitty 2008 remake that was so fucking awful i couldn't even finish it sweet spear you see a black man with a sharp stick is supposed to be a spear <laughs> oh my god get the fuck off my screen nick cannon all right all right let's let's do this right let's start over george romero's 1985 day of the dead to kick this off this has to be emphasized all right this entire movie is extremely fucking dark it starts with a subgroup of survivors flying around a florida city with a chopper and a bullhorn and they're searching for other survivors which is greeted of course by groans from slow moving mobs of walking corpses the entire city is literally crawling with zombies it's like a bunch of worms coming out from under the ground and upon losing even further hope in their situation which by the way is the theme of this entire goddamn movie they return to their base of operation which is an underground army bunker and as the group descends into the bunker they're confronted by some army goons who are more than just a bit over the top crazy. Bang! You're dead! <laughs> and that, my friends, is either very well scripted cabin fever, mid 80s cocaine use, or most likely a combination of both. But either way, these are the most incompetent retards you could ever hope to spend the apocalypse with. From not taking obvious mental health concerns seriously, to not keeping accurate records of the zombies removed from their death caverns, these assholes spend all of their downtime growing weed, smoking weed, and brawling. And while that may very well lead to good times in the regular world, it is a pain in everyone's ass during an apocalypse. As it turns out, the group of scientists were sent there by the government to study the zombie epidemic before losing all outside communication. This is not the best place to be sending from. A lot of the equipment I'm using has been rotting down here since the Second World War. Fact is, either we are the only ones left, or there's nobody within range of my puny little Second World War signals. And they're being accompanied by this increasingly small group of soldiers who, due to the recent loss of their commanding officer, now have a new leader who is the take-no-shit type. I'm running this monkey farm now, Frankenstein, and I want to know what the fuck you're doing with my time! Anybody else have any questions about the way things are going to run around here from now on? This ain't a goddamn field trip, people. This is a fucking war! And Captain Rhodes isn't exactly thrilled that the head of the science team, a man they call Frankenstein, has very impractical ideas about how to handle this zombie situation. They can be fooled, mm. you see? They can be tricked into being good little girls and boys. Same way we were tricked into it, on the promise of some reward to come. <laughs> Apparently he was in the military. But eventually the incompetence of the soldiers leads to shit righteously hitting the goddamn fan and all hell breaking the fuck loose. But just when you think they might have a shred of patience left, it turns out Frankenstein has been using body parts of the dead soldiers as rewards for his well-behaving specimens. And Rhodes not being pleased, handles the situation like any good army captain would. Scum! You, you must listen to me, Captain. You must listen! Listen to this. With the remaining troops ready to get the fuck out of the underground bunker, the only thing they need is Flyboy to operate the chopper. I'll kill the rest of them one at a time unless you get your black ass out here, Flyboy. 
And just as soon as Flyboy finally agrees to take everyone out of this death chamber underground, Rhodes demands that it just be the troops and the scientists be left behind. Flyboy is just not having it. You'll never get me to do that, Rhodes. <laughs> Fighting ensues, bullets are fired, escape attempts are made, and dude who has spent the entire goddamn movie showing obvious signs of a mental breakdown that apparently it takes a woman's intuition to realize, decides to go out with a bang and bring a few hundred zombies to the party. Zombies are everywhere as our remaining trio escape through the death caverns in search of the back door to the bunker. The army soldiers are picked off one at a time by hordes in some of the most kick-ass, bloody, intestine-ripping, face-peeling ways ever depicted in a horror film. This movie spares no goddamn details and leaves nothing to the imagination, and for that I must say, God bless you Tom Savini, you magnificent bastard. Steele decides to make the smartest decision yet and puts a 45 round through the back of his head before being ripped apart and eaten alive. And that leaves us just with the mighty Captain Rhodes, who is looking to stock up on some ammo and make his getaway. And Jesus Christ, 10 round magazines in a military bunker in a southern state, shit really has hit the fan. Come on, come on. After taking two shots, he stumbles to stand. He makes his way to the nearest door and opens it, only to find the end of his miserable fucking life waiting on the other side. And after one final shot to the liver, Rhodes becomes yet another treat for the undead cannibals. And again, not a single fucking detail is spared from our eyes. <laughs> Our trio finally manage to escape via a staircase in the death caverns. They make their way to the chopper, and it looks like they get to spend the rest of their days stuck on the gloomiest goddamn beach in movie history as the last remaining human beings on the planet. Fuck yes. This is how you end a horror movie. Hopeless and nihilistic. It's almost impressive how little mainstream attention this movie gets compared to Night of the Living Dead or Dawn of the Dead. And granted, there was that abomination of a 2008 remake, and there was this new Day of the Dead Bloodline movie, which I saw some of, but it really wasn't all that great, so I didn't even finish it. Uh, I don't see most of this being done, though, for this movie's sake. I think it's more of the latest trend in Hollywood of, let's remake everything. The growing tension and the power struggle between this team of scientists and the military members is a very compelling feature, in my opinion. This is what makes good zombie movies, and more specifically here, Day of the Dead, very interesting. In the midst of this hopeless zombie apocalypse, where for all we know there's only a dozen humans left alive on the entire goddamn planet, the real tension isn't between undead cannibals overwhelming the remaining humans, it's actually between the surviving humans themselves. And it's interesting because I think this is something that goes unnoticed in the zombie genre as a whole, whether it be the Romero zombies or the infected zombies, or even The Walking Dead, which you guys might be familiar with on AMC. It really rings true in this particular movie. In a zombie apocalypse, the other survivors aren't just a threat. Oftentimes, they are the main threat. In fact, it could be stated that this movie, and perhaps the genre as a whole again, is more of a statement about humanity than it is just some tasteless gore fest. The unknown isn't really what we have to fear, perhaps. And it's kind of deep for a genre that's often considered to be a tasteless gore fest. But what's important, though, whether or not you buy into that sort of underlying philosophy is that there is an appreciation for the majesty that is full the fuck on gore. Few movies have the balls to show intestines being ripped from a screaming man's corpse as he's being eaten alive. But Tom Savini delivers. All of which I reiterate is traditional, not a touch of CGI and those guts spilling on the floor. Fuck your CGI blood splatter as Captain Rhodes empties a magazine in a Frankenstein's chest. It should also be pointed out how powerful the setting for this movie is. The confined space, the dark caverns, the outdated radio equipment that keeps the group completely cut off from outside interaction. If there even is any, there's not even any hint that there's life anywhere besides of this like lonely little bunker 
in the middle of fucking the Everglades or wherever the fuck they are. The space of the bunker by itself is another interesting point because it almost makes you feel claustrophobic when you're watching this movie. It's almost like just they're in one giant tomb. And even when the protagonists eventually escape the underground and make it to the surface, essentially digging themselves out of their own grave, are things really any better for them? Their situation as far as the zombie apocalypse goes is the exact same. So fucking dark, hopeless, and nihilistic that it's easily my favorite zombie movie. This movie has the same type of appeal, in my opinion, that Black Sabbath's Master of Reality has. It's, it's very dark. It has this edge that the casual critics are not going to approve of. But the fans who get this and understand why it works are going to fucking cherish it, and it is going to be a cult classic. And I know that's how I feel about it. George Romero, Day of the Dead, definitely check it out.